I think Mario Gabelli summed up the feeling among most Fox shareholders when he said on CNBC earlier that he's doing what he always does at a great opera, and that is applaud the participants and urge them to carry on. And you can see why this bidding war between Disney and Comcast has generated an additional $20 billion for Fox shareholders, and it may not be done yet. This morning, Disney announced a higher offer for much of 21st Century Fox valued at $38 a share as opposed to Disney's prior $28 all stock bid. This one allows investors to choose between cash or stock. An overall mix that Disney is expecting will be about 50-50 cash and stock. In a statement today, Fox said they believe the Disney offer to be quote, superior to the one made by Comcast on June 13th. That proposal was worth about $35 per share in cash. Now, both Comcast and Disney are seeking to acquire most of 21st Century Fox, which includes its film and TV studio, cable networks like Nat Geo and FX, and its regional sports networks. Comcast, the parent company of CNBC, declined to comment on Disney's new offer. But the structure of the deal that Disney unveiled this morning actually surprised many investors I spoke with, both in the price and the addition of a so-called collar on the stock consideration. This essentially helps Disney keep the $38 a share price tag by using options as the stock price fluctuates before the close. Melissa. All right, Leslie, thank you. Leslie Picker from the newsroom. So as the multiple rounds of bidding continue for Fox, we thought we'd play a little matchmaker oh, with our traders. But there's a twist this time, and you guys have to listen very carefully because I know you're very challenged when it comes to the game department. <laughs> we are. Each of our traders will pick who they think will win the Fox deal, Disney or Comcast, and then decide who would make the perfect match with the other company. Clear? Clear. Clear so. is, is all right. Is it clear for clear is, <laughs> You gotta be, you you can observe how it's played. Oh good. good. Pete yeah. will begin. If I do it right, yeah. Who will win? Disney. Fox. Disney's gonna win. win. Fox. I think Disney's gonna okay. win. I think that the the deal wants to get done with Disney for a variety of different reasons, and I think part of it is the legacy, and I think that's. That's why Disney's going to win. I think eventually it's going to get very close. Yeah. And I, I'm sure we're going to hear back, and Comcast's going to have a very raised bid. But I think eventually Disney does win out. Okay, so Disney wins. I think Netflix is too expensive. I think Viacom is too complicated and too many hurdles. So for me, it's going to be Lionsgate. It just provides, you know, the loser, Comcast in this particular case. They get the films, they get TV, they get over the top, they get a lot of different things. And I think it's a great match. Yeah. He Why does a mean Tevia, by the way. For I real. can do a heck of a Tevia. Yeah. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll do that a little bit later on in the show. <laughs> That's a tease. Oh, what do you think about Lionsgate? We've had Michael Burns on many times. You know the way. You know, think about where Lionsgate was seven or eight years ago. It was an $8 stock, right? We had Mr. Icon going after him seemingly every day in the media, and we, Michael Burns stuck to his guns. Now it's a stock that Pete Najarian is talking about being taken over by potentially Comcast. Come a long way. So... I'm with you 100%. I'm not going to give away the ghost here, as they say. Mm, yeah. But I'm with Pedro 100%. Okay. Uh, Karen, it's yes. your turn. Okay. Who wins? Who wins? I actually think Disney wins also for a couple of reasons. The regulatory head start is potentially meaningful. The cash stock element is the stock part is enticing to Rupert from a tax standpoint. The cash for shareholders who want cash. It also allows them to not take on as much debt as Comcast as they can issue shares. Comcast doesn't want to issue their shares at this low level. Makes me think maybe Disney's comfortable issuing their shares at this level. I don't know what that tells us huh. about their belief in right. Disney stock. However, I think that they win. So where does that leave Comcast? I actually think instead of looking at, at this kind of content like a CBS or a Lionsgate, Activision going for the game. I think actually Activision would be a better fit for Disney, but trying to be a good player of this game. Very good I player so far. Activision would be an interesting acquisition for somebody who's looking for content. A number of analysts have said that getting into the video game space would make a lot of sense, especially with the legalization of sports betting. It sort yeah. of opens up a whole other stream. It's interesting. We've, we've all talked about it a lot. And, uh, you know, look at Electronic Arts with a $45 billion market cap. That would be a great fit for Disney when you think about the sports and some of the other franchises that they have with, between Star Wars and, and Battlefront at EA. But that's a deal that would have to get done at $60 billion. Then we're talking about these media companies that have sales like that are 5x of what um, like an EA has. So to me, um, it makes sense in a perfect world where people don't have to take on tons of debt to do these sorts of deals. It just doesn't seem maybe that likely at the end of the day. Okay.
Okay, well then, Dan, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be really quick. I agree with Disney for the exact reasons that you said. I think the the the, the shares, the, you know, the stock versus um, cash for the Murdochs. Um, I also think the regulatory head start. This seems to be the narrative, and we're probably all going to be wrong. Um, Comcast's going to do something. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is that I would not think about um, Disney and Fox what Comcast has to do. I would almost think about what AT and T and Time Warner have just done. So I suspect um, a move that Comcast must be thinking about is a merger of equals possibly with Verizon um, and really going after that kind of model rather than just the pure content and then the OTT model. Which I mean, is what's doubling fun. down on, on, on what they already have. Yeah. Well, it's a different distribution. I mean, the AT&T, you could have made that same argument, and that was a deal that they hotly pursued for a whole host of reasons, and they got it done. So who is AT&T's uh, biggest rival forever? It's been Verizon, um, and these are vertical deals. And I think that uh, I'm sure the people over at Verizon can't think that Randall Stevenson's had got his head up as you-know-what on hmm. this deal. You know, Ooh. You know what? Guy. I don't, I'm not quite certain what. You know, we didn't rehearse this. We don't rehearse I see you can tell we don't they rehearse don't. a lot we of things. Rehearse. It's, it's I mean, the folks clear. at home. It's I mean, it's pretty clear. clear. But I'm with, pa I'm with, pa Disney wins. I think okay, Disney, Disney needs, wins. I think Disney needs these assets more than Comcast does. I think we've said that for a while. I also think this deal is probably going to go north of $80 billion because Comcast will come back. I think their game all along is to try to get Disney to pay up. With that said, Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Wow. wow. And we didn't, I'm telling you, we didn't like rehearse it. this thing. No. I mean, it's just, I, it's obviously it's not a huge, it's not the deal of nearly the magnitude, but it's a nice tuck-in deal that probably makes sense. On a lot well, do you think a lot of deals, do you think there's a lot of tuck-ins are going to happen? That like would that? make more sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Don't you think? Than these huge, huge yeah, giants, monstrous, giant regulatory things. Because well, history has shown that they actually don't work. Well, wait a second. Well, that's, that's not always true. Oh, the big media match. Oh, the big ones. Are you doing like AOL? The little tuck in ones can work, ones can work really well. Work. Right. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, so oh I didn't know you thought you were making fun of me again. I'm always on the defensive <laughs> with you. Sorry. No. <laughs> I, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest disagrees with the traders on the desk and believes that Comcast will win the battle for Fox. Joining us now is BTIG's Rich Greenfield. Uh, Rich, it's always great to speak with you. Um, why do you think Comcast is going to win? Well, first of all, I think there's this recurring theme that Disney has to have these assets if it wants to catch Netflix. And that's a little hard to understand when you consider the fact that Netflix hasn't bought a studio. Netflix hasn't bought international satellite distribution. There's just this narrative that's been created that Disney kind of has to have this in order to flourish in the future. Disney already makes great content. I think the, the challenge for Comcast is they are a vertically integrated media company in the U.S. They're trying to replicate that vertical integration all around the world. I can't figure out, Melissa, what other asset, and I think your traders were struggling uh, as you kind of pose this issue. There's nothing that looks like this, especially when you think about Comcast is, is well positioned in the U.S. They'd like to have a little bit bigger studio, but they really want to replicate this model of vertical integration all around the world. There's no other obvious path for them to take other than Fox and Sky. And so I think they're prepared to go meaningfully further. I think this battle hasn't gotten close to ending. I think you're going to see multiple shots still fired back and forth. Comcast is just not going to give up and roll over this easily. So in other words, if Disney wins, you think Comcast, there cannot be another deal which could get them even close to what they want to be. I think that's the real problem here. When you look at like European satellite, the European cable networks that, that Sky owns, the platform that they have across India, there's nothing that looks like this. And, and I think a really important point is Comcast isn't doing this to catch Netflix. They are really looking at this as we really like what we are in the U.S. Yes, there's more challenges, there's more competition in the U.S., but we'd really like to replicate this model we have in the U.S. all around the world. I don't see an easy path to doing that. Yeah, you could cherry pick assets here and there overseas, but there's no scaled acquisition opportunity like Fox and Sky for Comcast. I think, as you said yourself, like you think about Disney buying an Activision or Disney buying a Spotify or a Twitter. I think there's many paths for Disney to go within the, the alternatives. I think we're all struggling to figure out what would Comcast do because it's just not obvious. And I think that tells you that they're going to be able to go further than people think, especially because, the, you know, Brian Roberts is an owner. This is his company. He and his family built this. They're thinking out 30 to 40 years. So their owners, not employees. And I think their time frame is going to be different than Disney's, is going to be different than their investors. They're going to look out further. It's Karen. Let me ask you something. Do you think, I know Disney has said we're not talking about carving up the assets, but do you think that is 
ultimately possible as the bidding goes higher and higher, and each of them maybe think, well, you know what, this is too risky. I think when you looked at how Disney point blank attacked Brian Roberts and the Comcast team today, I, I think it's very hard to imagine the blood between these two companies just looks bad now. I mean, I think you've really set up a, an ongoing battle between Disney and Comcast, no matter what happens here. Sitting around the table and carving up the assets, first of all, I think from an antitrust standpoint, probably just not possible. I think major U.S. studios sitting down to discuss carving up a third studio and all the other things that would go into that. I think just from a regulatory standpoint, I really think it's very hard to envision. Look, is there a scenario where Disney wins Fox, Comcast wins Sky, and then after the fact they carve up the assets? Not out of the realm of possibility, but I think we're not even close to that. I think right now it's, it's the goal is winner take all. Mm -hmm. And I think both companies certainly, I know Comcast has more capacity. I think Disney already raised their bid 35% from where they were paying. Is Disney willing to go further? I know Comcast has the capacity to go further. They have a very stable U.S. cable business. Doesn't have the growth it used to, but a very stable cash flow. And there's companies like Charter that are far more levered than Comcast. So I think the you know, banks are already comfortable lending to a cable business, a broadband business, at greater leverage than they ever have the entertainment business. Rich, before you go, we got to ask you about Netflix, uh, sure. now at around 416 a share, hitting a new all-time high in today's session. Uh, does your view of Netflix change even at the margin if any of these deals get done? Do any of these deals pose any sort of challenge even at the margin to a Netflix? I think what's fascinating is, we'll come back to where we started, is here, you know, here's Disney trying to chase Netflix by buying legacy media. They're buying cable networks and satellite platforms rather than just investing. I mean, what, what Netflix has taught us and what you're seeing in Apple, Apple just did a big deal today where they're basically working with the Henson company to enter the kids' programming arena for Apple's coming service. All you need is money and time and energy in terms of your investment in technology and content creation. I still can't figure out why Disney's not just blowing it out and spending a ton of money to build content and launching direct-to-consumer now. I don't know why the right answer is buying more legacy media companies like Fox. It seems like an odd decision. Now, obviously, they've made that decision. But I think if you're Netflix, you're far happier with Disney going out and buying legacy media than investing in really blowing out direct to consumer organically. And so I actually think th this battle and this fight that Disney's gotten into actually is, is a meaningful positive, especially because it's going to put a lot of leverage on Disney, which is going to hamstring them even more as they try to compete with Netflix. So I, I think this is honestly this scenario is the best possible thing for Netflix stock. And presumably the best scenario is either a Disney prevails or a Comcast prevails because both increase the leverage on Absolutely. their balance sheet. Yeah. Absolutely. And then okay. I think, as you said, the loser is going to try to be on the hunt for something else. Sure. The loser is not just going to sit static. I think the loser has shown their hand that they're going to want to do something in a very scaled transaction way. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.